Maureen and I have been using a phrase, simple and gentle. Uh, that's usually in terms of, of our parenting style as of late. What would be the simple and gentle thing? Uh, today on Palm Sunday slash Passion Sunday, uh, it's a Sunday where simple and gentle goes a long way. A lot of our uh, current liturgical resources, church resources, will recommend that, that pastors perhaps forego a sermon or even a small teaching because this is the longest gospel text, the, the longest gospel lectionary passage of the year, uh, and rightly so. This is the passion story. We began with a celebration uh, as, as Jesus entered into Jerusalem. We remember the story. The palm branches were cut and laid in front of him so he would have a path uh, on which to, to travel into Jerusalem but we only get to celebrate for a very short time before those same crowds become the crowds that shout crucify him. So today Simple and Gentle is me uh, in one of my new favorite places uh, here in Whitney uh, near Oxford. This is Tower Hill Cemetery. Uh, there are some old stones around me. Uh, it seems like a fitting place uh, as we uh, prepare to see Jesus um, in the tomb. So let me read for us the gospel lesson for today for the, the Passion Liturgy, and that begins in Matthew chapter 26 uh, at verse 14 and goes on for quite some time. So I invite you to uh, listen, to allow God's Spirit to move, the same Holy Spirit that inspired uh, the writing of this word, inspires our hearing, uh, hopefully inspires my reading. Uh, here on a day before you'll hear me uh, read it for you. Uh, it's Saturday here. Uh, but, but just ask the Holy Spirit to come and to, to be present among us as we hear this word. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I turn Jesus over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. From that time, he was looking for an opportunity to turn him in. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare you to eat the Passover meal? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and say, The teacher says, My time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. The disciples did just as Jesus instructed them. They prepared the Passover. That evening he took his place at the table with the twelve disciples. As they were eating, he said, I assure you that one of you will betray me. Deeply saddened, each one said to him, I'm not the one, am I, Lord? He replied, The one who will betray me is the one who dips his hand with me into this bowl. The human one goes to his death just as it is written about him. But how terrible it is for the person who betrays the human one. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Now Judas, who would betray him, replied, it's not me, is it, Rabbi? Jesus answered, You said it. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, so that their sins may be forgiven. I tell you, I won't drink wine again until that day when I drink it in a new way with you in my Father's kingdom. Then, after singing songs of praise, they went to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Tonight you will all fall away because of me. This is because it is written, I will hit the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will go off in all directions. But after I'm raised up, I'll go before you to Galilee. Peter replied, If everyone else stumbles because of you, I'll never stumble. Jesus said to him, I assure you that before the rooster crows tonight, you will deny me three times. Peter said, Even if I must die alongside you, I won't deny you. All the disciples said the same thing. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to the disciples, Stay here while I go and pray over there. When he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, he began to feel sad and anxious. Then he said to them, I'm very sad. It's as if I'm dying. Stay here and keep alert with me. 
Then he went a short distance further. He fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but what you want. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Couldn't you stay alert with me for one hour? Stay alert and pray so you won't give in to temptation. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. A second time he went away and prayed, My father, if it's not possible that this cup be taken away unless I drink it, then let it be what you want. Again he came and found them sleeping. Their eyes were heavy with sleep. But he left them and again went and prayed the same words for the third time. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Will you sleep and rest all night? Look, the time has come for the human one to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us go. Look, here comes the betrayer. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came. With him was a large crowd carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. His betrayer had given them a sign. Arrest the man I kiss. Just then he came to Jesus and said, Hello, Rabbi. And he kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of those with Jesus reached for his sword, striking the high priest's slave. He cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put the sword back into its place. All those who use the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I'm not able to ask my father and he would send me more than 12 battle groups of angels right away? But if I did that, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say this must happen? Then Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like a thief? Day after day I sat in the temple preaching, but you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that what the prophets said in the scriptures might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left Jesus and ran away. Those who arrested Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest. The legal experts and the elders gathered there. Peter followed from a distance until he came to the high priest's courtyard. He entered that area and sat outside with the officers to see how it would turn out. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they could put him to death. They didn't find anything they could use from the many false witnesses who were willing to come forward. But finally they found two who said, This man said, I can destroy God's temple and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood and said to Jesus, Aren't you going to respond to the testimony these people have brought against you? But Jesus was silent. The high priest said, By the living God, I demand that you tell us whether you are the Christ, God's Son. You said it, Jesus replied. But I say to you that from now on you'll see the human one sitting on the right side of the Almighty and coming in the heavenly clouds. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He's insulting God. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, you've heard his insult against God. What do you think? And they answered, He deserves to die. Then they spit in his face and beat him. They hit him and said, Prophesy for us, Christ, who hit you? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant woman came and said to him, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of all of them, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he went over to the gate, another woman saw him and and those that were with her, and, and they said, This man was with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. With a solemn pledge, he denied it again, saying, I don't know the man. A short time later, those standing there came and said to Peter, You must be one of them. The way you talk gives you away. Then he cursed and swore, I don't know the man. At that very moment, the rooster crowed. Peter remembered Jesus' words. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter went out and cried uncontrollably. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people reached the decision to have Jesus put to death. They bound him, led him away, and turned him over to Pilate, the governor. 
When Judas, who betrayed Jesus, saw that Jesus was condemned to die, he felt deep regret. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders and said, I did wrong because I betrayed an innocent man. But they said, What is that to us? That's your problem. Judas threw the silver pieces into the temple and left. Then he went and hanged himself. The chief priests picked up the silver pieces and said, According to the law, it's not right to put this money in the treasury. Since it was used to pay for someone's life, it's unclean. So they decided to use it to buy the potter's field where strangers could be buried. That's why the field is called Field of Blood to this very day. This fulfilled the words of Jeremiah the prophet, And I took the thirty pieces of silver, the price for the one whose price had been set by some of the Israelites, and I gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Jesus was brought before the governor. The governor said, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. But he didn't answer when the chief priests and the elders accused him. Then Pilate said, Don't you hear the testimony they bring against you? But he didn't answer. Not a single word. So the governor was greatly amazed. It was customary during the festival for the governor to release to the crowd one prisoner, whomever they might choose. At that time, there were well-known prisoners, one of them named Jesus Barabbas. When the crowd had come together, Pilate asked them, Who would you like me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? He knew that the leaders of the people had handed him over because of jealousy. While he was serving as judge, his wife sent this message to him, Leave that righteous man alone. I'm suffering much today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to kill Jesus. The governor said, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, they replied. Pilate said, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they all said, Crucify him. But he said, Why? What wrong has he done? They shouted even louder, Crucify him! Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere and that a riot was starting, so he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your problem. All the people replied, Let his blood be on us and our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's house. They gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a red military coat on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand. They bowed down in front of him and they mocked him. They said, Hail, King of the Jews. After they spit on him, they took the stick and struck his head again and again. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the military coat and put his own clothes back on him. They led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they found Simon, a man from Cyrene. They forced him to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means skull place, they gave Jesus wine mixed with vinegar to drink. But after tasting it, he didn't want to drink it. After they crucified him, they divided up his clothes among them by drawing lots. They sat there guarding him. They placed above his head the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. They crucified with him two outlaws, one on his right, one on his left. Those who were walking by insulted Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, So you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the legal experts and the elders, were making fun of him, saying, He saved others, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel, so let him come down from the cross now. Then we'll believe in him. He trusts in God, so let God deliver him now if he wants to. He said, I'm God's son. The outlaws who were crucified with him insulted him in the same way. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. 
At about three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lama, sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran over, took a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink. But the rest of them said, let's see if Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried out with a loud shout. And then he died. Look, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their graves and went to the holy city where they appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had just happened, they were filled with awe and said, this was certainly God's son. Many women who were watching from a distance, they had followed Jesus from Galilee to serve him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. That evening, a man named Joseph came. He was a rich man from Arimathea who had become a disciple of Jesus. He came to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission to take it. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had carved out of the rock. After he rolled a large stone at the door of the tomb, he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting in front of the tomb. The next day, which was the day after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate. They said, Sir, we remember that while that deceiver was still alive, he said, After three days I will arise. Therefore, order the grave to be sealed until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell people he's been raised from the dead, and this last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate replied, You have your soldiers for guard duty. Go and make it as secure as you know how. Then they went and secured the tomb by sealing the stone and posting the guard. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.